Hey there everyone, and welcome back to our next video in our series of how to go to zero to hero in cadence development. And in this video, we're going to be talking about pre and post conditions. So this is going to be a relatively short video, there's not too much to cover. Um, but this is something that you're going to see a lot in cadence. So it's worth making a video on its own. Um, so yeah, let's dive right into it. So I guess just from a conceptual point of view, you know, you might be asking what even are pre and post conditions. Um, in Cadence, you can think of them as restrictions on your functions um, and, and other things, which I'll show in a bit. Um, but the, they really are, are restrictions or bounds on what you're returning in your functions and what you're receiving in your functions. So, for example, um, if you're making a call to return a certain value, you can add a post condition that gets run after the function executes to see if your return value is abides by some condition. Um, similarly, you can use preconditions to see if a parameter you're taking into your function um, also abides by some uh, restrictions. And we're going to go over all that in this video. So first of all, just to, to sort of run a simple test, um, I have a contract called test. Um, it has a uh, it has an int as part of its state. That's it stored in this x variable. We have a function to return uh, x, uh, which is you know return self dot x here, just returning this variable, and we're initializing x to zero initially. So what we can do is actually just deploy this contract. Um, we'll get, it gets deployed, and then let's go into our script. Um, and we're just going to um, import test from that account and call get x on it, which returns an integer. Um, and you know the script returns an integer, so all is good. So let's execute the script, and we'll see that it returns um, a value of zero. Um, so it's working as intended, right? So let's actually add a post condition to this function to sort of um, make sure that what we're returning is actually what we want. Um, so what we can do is we can add something called a post condition. So we're going to add the keyword post and open up our brackets like so. And so what post does is it runs after the function is executed. So um, we'll run after the function is completed. Okay. So after the function, which in this case is get x, is completed. Okay. So what we can do is we can say, hey, um, what we are returning, which we can use a keyword called result, so result is the int that we're returning equals self.x. So what we're doing is we're ensuring that the result, which is what we're returning, equals self.x, which is this variable. And if it doesn't, then we're going to add an error message saying the returned x is not the same as our state. OK? And so obviously, this is always going to work because we're returning self.x. Um, but we can sort of just make sure that, that this works, right? So let's uh, redeploy this contract. Um, so it got redeployed. And if we go to our script and execute the script, you'll see that um, all works well. It returns uh, zero, which is good, right? But if we go back into our contract, and for some reason, let's say the developer like messes up when they're making the contract, right? And they just return a 10. Um, well, x is zero, and the, we're returning 10. So the result, which is 10, is not going to equal um, x, which is 0. So let's redeploy this contract again and see what happens if we run this script for a third time. So if we clear this and run, it says post condition failed. The return x is not the same as our state. So you can see that um, you know, it threw an error. So cool. That's uh, sort of um, how to use post conditions. Now we can also try something called a precondition. So let's add another function here, public function called increment. And this is going to, um, or actually, let's just add a function called uh, change x. And so this is going to take in a new x, which is an integer. Um, and we'll open up these brackets. And we're going to say self.x self .x equals new x, right? Um, so we can uh, have this function, and we can pass in a new x, and it'll just change our x, right? So, so let's do that. Let's redeploy this contract. Um, it gets redeployed. And we can open up a transaction. Remember, because we're changing the state of the blockchain, so we have to have a transaction. Um, let's just co copy and paste this stuff. I already set up a. I came prepared today, so I actually already set up another transaction uh, for a later part of this video. Uh, but let's just delete all this stuff for now. So, what we can say is, um, let's go into this execute and let's say um, test dot change x, um, and the new x is going to be I don't know. Let's say ten, right? So let's refresh this page. I think it's like lagging a little bit. Okay, so so the new x is going to be 10. So if we uh, run this function, this uh, transaction, um, why is it saying that? Uh, that's weird that it's saying that. Um, 
Okay, I, I, I guess it was just being weird. <laughs> so um, I just refreshed the page and now it's working. So we've changed x to 10, and if we go back to our script and run this again, we'll see that it, now the value is 10, right? Which is which is what we expected. Uh, but we can actually add a precondition to this. So let's add a precondition. And let's say that for some reason, we just hate the number 5. For, for no reason. We just hate the number 5. And we say, you know what? We never want x to be the number 5. Well, we can say uh, new x um, equals... Um, so the new x equals, uh, or we want to make a precondition that says the new x does not equal the number 5, and if it is equal to 5, then we're going to say, uh, we hate the number 5, right? So for, for whatever reason, okay? So this is checking something before, uh, we even run this function. So this will run, um, when the function, which is change x, gets, uh, executed. So if we, once again, redeploy the contract... Um, do this, and then go into our transaction, and we pass in the number 5, um, it will, um, let's send this, and it'll say the precondition failed, we hate the number 5, and if we were to change it to something like 10, then it will be all good. See? No errors. Okay, cool. So, uh, one more thing that I want to show you is we can add a function called increment x, um, and this is going to be uh, just a function that re uh, says self.x equals self.x plus 1. Okay, so just a simple function that increments uh, the x. Now what we can say um, is we can add another post condition here, um, and I'm going to show you another keyword that you can use. So we already showed that result is the returning value. Well, we can also add a, add a uh, thing called before. So what we can say is that self dot, so uh, self.x, so the new self.x, which is the added one, equals before, or so I don't know why I typed that. So equals before self.x plus 1. So this is saying that the new self.x, remember this gets executed after the function is completed. So this will be the updated value, equals before, so this is a new keyword. So before self.x, so this means, um, so what we can say is that before is the value before this function was even called. Okay. Um, plus one, and so this just ensures that you know we're we're adding one to the function. So um, let's uh, redeploy this. Let's go back into our transaction, and let's just say um, you know test dot increment x. Um, it's going to give us an error. We have to refresh the page. And so um, if we actually go into our script, uh, run the script, it says um, uh, oh we ne we never change this back, right? So we have to change this back. Um, redeploy again. Gosh, we're we're redeploying so much this uh, this time. Um, but if we refresh this page again uh, and run our script, then it'll return a value of zero. And if we run the transaction, then it will, um, you know, not give any errors because indeed the um, new value is uh, does abide by this uh, st thing, right? So that's all cool. Now that that's sort of like the basis. So if you understand that, you're gonna understand everything. Um, but I just want to show you this in the context of like resources as well. So as you know, we can have um, functions and stuff inside of a resource. Um, and so we can actually also use pre and post conditions in, in interfaces. So if we, um, I'll just sort of describe this a little bit. So this is another contract called test2. Um, we have a resource called greeter that has a greeting string inside of it that I just initialized to hello world and a function that simply just returns that resource. So um, what we can do is add a resource interface called iGreeter. And in here, we are going to have um, a, we're going to say that, you know what, we want our greeter to have another function called like change greeting. So we'll say public function change greeting um, to the new greeting, which is a string. Um, and this is going to be that. Um, and so if we say that, you know, our greeter is actually going to abide by this uh, interface, you know, of course, it's going to give us an error um, or I greeter. Uh, saying that it does not conform, and that's because of the fact that we have to add this function inside of our uh, resource. Um, and so if you don't understand uh, your resource interfaces, make sure you watch the video on resource interfaces. It'll make a lot more sense, um, which is one of the previous videos in the series. But yeah, so if we wanted to change uh, this um, greeting now, um, you know, we could say that self.greeting uh, equals the new greeting. Um, but I wanted to show you that, you know, uh, so can I, oh, so we have to make this var, of course. Um, but I wanted to show you that, uh, you know, what I just showed you in, in, in the first part of the video was that if you wanted to add some restrictions around this, right, so we could actually say that, hey, 
the precondition here is that let's say we just hate the group we hate um i don't know let's say we hate the the name jacob right so self dot uh we want to make sure that um new greeting does not equal um hello jacob right we just we hate saying hello to jacob um so the the problem is that uh you know we hate saying hello to jacob um i showed in the previous part of the video that we could put that here but I also wanted to show you that we can also put this inside of the um, interface of declaration or up here. So instead of putting this down here, um, like I said, we can actually uh, take this and put it up here. Um, and so this looks a little weird because you're actually not allowed to implement functions in Cadence that are inside of a interface. And it's actually telling us that, right? Cannot implement function in, a, in an interface. However, there's an exception for pre and post conditions. So we can actually l put that up here um, and so then it, it won't be um, a problem. And so um, implicitly, when, when it calls this function now, um, it's going to make sure that it abides by, by this precondition as well. Um, and so we can sort of test that together. So if I deploy this, go to our transaction. Again, I'm, I'm so prepared. Look at me here. Um, so create greeter. And then we want to say, you know, greeter dot uh, change greeting to be hello, Jacob. Um, and we run this transaction. It's going to say, hey, um, oh wait, what's the, uh, what's the issue here? So invalid, uh, that is weird. I've never seen this before. Okay. I guess it was just being, uh, strange. Um, so it looks like for some reason it's actually not doing that. Um, What? Did I spell something wrong? Oh, oh my, I'm such an idiot. Um, it's because uh, in this um, in this call, I added an exclamation mark. So uh, we added an extra layer of enthusiasm. So, okay, so if I add an exclamation mark here, then it should be a problem, right? So send. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So, all right, so there you go. Um, it says, you know, we hate saying hello to Jacob. I just forgot to add the uh, exclamation mark here. Um, so, yeah, so that's just a simple video on pre and post conditions. Um, in the next video, we're going to go over contract interfaces. So, um, you know, we went over resource interfaces. We're going to go over contract interfaces. Um, and pre and post conditions are actually most used in contract interfaces. So we will see them there. So thanks for listening, um, and I'll see you in the next one.